lecture, we started talking about 10 steps in the accounting cycle. And I just wanted to use this to briefly review and provide a little transition, not to give you an opportunity to write it down. You've written it down once already. Don't try to write it down. It's the same thing you wrote down in this lecture. I just wanted something to gesture toward. We talked about first four steps, business transactions all the way through, recording, posting them, and preparing trial balance last week. In Monday's lecture, we talked about making adjusting entries on a worksheet and preparing a worksheet and how it was a good tool to pull the information together. We didn't finish the worksheet. If, in your homework for today, you had to prepare financial statements, make adjusting entries, make closing entries, and prepare post-closing trial balance, relying on the textbook's explanation and examples, and I hope you accomplished that. I'd like to go back and talk about closing entries the remainder of the day. After we finish off the worksheet, let's talk about closing entries and see if we can get you to understand them better than when you arrived today. In Monday's lecture, right at the end, when we ran out of time and we're doing the worksheet, I asked you to bring this handout with you today and to have some these four columns. <clears throat> May I ask four people to volunteer and tell me those totals? Anybody add this up already? Here we go. Deanna. <coughs> Income statement, debit, total set. One more time, Deanna. 18547 is what Deanna and I got. You may take our word for it. I hope you did it on your own. It's always better when you do it. I'll show you what a team player I am. I'm going to add this income statement credit column. Let me see. That's um, $26,324. I need an auditor. That's right. Oh, that's pathetic. I need an auditor. That's right. That's a little bit better, but not enough. Oh, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. I thought everything had to balance. First chapter, every transaction in the accounting equation balanced. Second chapter, every entry had a debit and a credit and they balanced. This chapter, we started out a big old worksheet here and the trial balance columns balanced and the adjustments columns balanced and the adjusted trial balance columns balanced. Every Oh, this is driving me crazy. I'm on the verge of a nervous breakdown here. I can't stand it that these are in balance. Let's come back and resolve that in a second. How about balance sheet, debit, total? Who's got me this total? I need some help. This sum, somebody quickly. Yes, ma'am? 34,397. 34,397 is what I got. Don't take our word for it. You ought to add it up yourself. How about balance sheet credit total? One new volunteer. Anybody else add it up before you came to class today? Wesley? 26,620. 26,620, Wesley says. Here's what I got. And I'm pretty stressed out over those four totals. Everything's balanced up to this moment. And now I've got income statement columns that don't balance and balance sheet columns that don't balance. Let's soothe me a little bit. Let's calm me. Here's how you do it. I suggest that we find the difference in these two totals. And that we write the difference under the smaller total. If you weren't participating to this point, you can participate the rest of the way. If you got a calculator with you, get it out. You learn more when you participate. Tell me about this difference. I need a volunteer. I need them fast. Talk to me, Hans. The difference is 7,777. like in South Lewis, kind of? Makes you feel right at home, huh? 7,777 is the difference. So hear me one more time. Find the difference in the two totals and write the difference under the smaller total. You get a little slothful about this, and accounting is a little procedural at times, a little detailed oriented at times. There are some expectations at times. So here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to bring down two totals that agree side by side. Give me that soothe, okay? Make them look like they balance. 
26324 plus 0 is 26324. And 18547 plus 7777 is 26324. Those look so much better, don't they? In balance. I forced them that way. Here we go again. I'm a little stressed out over these not balancing. Anybody found the difference in these two totals for me quickly? Yes, ma'am. 77. Cassidy. 77. What? What'd you say? 77, 77. Now, that's just two coincidences like that in the same time period. Can this be possible? For the third time. You find the difference in the two totals and you write the difference under the smaller total. And you bring down two totals that agree. So 34, 397, this is the part where you're slothful. You think it's okay to leave that number there and have this number here and make them appear to balance. And I'm trying to tell you not only do we want them to balance literally, we want them to look like they balance. Suit me. 34, 397 plus 0 is 34, 397. And 26, 620 plus 77, 77 is 34, 397. That looks so much better, doesn't it? Now, is there method to our madness? Let's talk about what these numbers represent. Let's talk about this number, for instance. You've got a whole worksheet to look upon. Give me a good descriptive title. What might we call this besides total? Total income? Income total? No. A good wrong answer. Tell me about this total. Look up in that column and see what the numbers are that we summed to this point. What's this? Somebody? Revenue. That's total revenue. Isn't it? Yes or no? Yes. yes. What's this? Total expense. Ah, now we're on a roll. That didn't take so long, did it? This is total expense. Now, we've had this conversation before, and you know this. What happens when we subtract total expenses from total revenue and revenues more? What's the name of what you get? Say it. Net, net income. income. Thank you. Ah. Now, if that's net income, and this is a great big worksheet, don't you think we ought to write net income over here and label that? Yeah. So that's why net income appears in that column. But why? Why did net income also appear in the balance sheet credit column? Any takers on that one? I'll lead somebody if they're willing. Wesley, you willing? You want to do it on your own or you want me to lead you? Well, let me give it a shot. All right. Why does this same number that we determined to be net income also appear in the balance sheet credit column? Well, the credit column on the balance sheet is going to be everything that you owe or liabilities and your owner's equity. And? Because, so your net income is part of your owner's equity? It is. Doesn't have anything to do with the liabilities part of that, yeah. but it has to do with owner's equity. Hey class, what does net income do to owner's equity? Speak up. Increases. It increases. Yes, Wesley? Yes. And what is capital's normal balance that's up there someplace you, you referred to, Wesley? I don't understand the question. What's capital's normal balance? Credit. In this column, Wesley says, there is an account, owner's equity, capital, that's got a credit balance. Yes? yes. What do you know about a credit capital and this credit net income? Two credits. How would you treat them? Would you add them or subtract them? Speak. Uh, Not enough people said? Uh, add. So the record. These are, this is ready to add the capital. We're going to increase capital by the amount of net income. That's why it's where it is. That's why it came out in these two outside columns. Now let me give you my last tip. When you do the procedures I just described, for the fourth time. Find the difference and write the difference under the smaller total. 
when you do those procedures and get differences in these two outside columns, it is net income. If you find the differences, follow the procedures and write the differences under the smaller total and your differences turn out in these two columns, it's net loss. If you find the differences and write them under the smaller total and it's in an outside column and an inside column, are you looking up? Or an inside column and an outside column? It's wrong. It'll never be that way. I mean, it'll, be, it'll never be that way and be right. It's wrong. It's either the two outside columns or the two inside columns. If it's the two inside columns, it's net loss. Now, you had to do that for today in the homework problem I've already collected. I hope you followed the textbook example and did it right. If you paid attention today and didn't do it right in homework, then maybe you'll understand better how to do it next time. Do you have a question about this before we do it? Worksheet's a great tool to gather information and meet the deadline of preparing the best, most accurate, reliable financial statements we can. We can. The worksheet's also a good tool for accomplishing the topic I'd like to talk about and explain the remainder of the hour, and that is about closing increase. I think there are lots of ways we can do closing increase. By the way, if you've got your note-taking guide, there's also a place to take notes on this. It's the back page of Monday's lecture handout. If you don't have it with you, don't panic. Nobody asks you to take notes, number one. You don't have to take notes. If you want to take notes, people took notes on plain paper before I handed them a handout. You can take notes on a plain piece of paper, can't you, if you want to take notes? Or you can try to take notes on that piece of paper you brought with you if you had it with you. Don't panic. I, I, there are lots of ways we can do closing entries. I happen to like the way the textbook did it. It's a systematic and thorough and makes sense. It's logical. There doesn't have to be done exactly this way, but I'd like for you to understand what it is that we're trying to accomplish. I think there are two distinct objectives that we're trying to accomplish. Closing entries should reduce temporary account balances to zero. And closing entries should permanently change capital. Through the process that I'm about to describe, we should see those two things happen. Let's take a trip back in time to chapter two, to lecture a week ago, when we talked about two Roman numerals establishing the normal balances of the accounts. One of them was the accounting equation and the T account under it and how assets were on the left and they got a debit balance and liabilities and owners equity were on the right and they got a credit balance. And then there was Roman numeral two, a uh, more in-depth look at capital. How revenue took the place of the credit side, the increased side of capital. How expenses and drawing took the place of the debit side of capital. Y'all with me? Remember this? Yes. yes. We call these temporary accounts. We call the ones that went on the income statement nominal. All last week, every journal entry we made, made, we talked about real and nominal to prepare us for this. I believe that closing entries are best accomplished when you go through four distinct steps. Before you write, I would like for you to just look at this and let me describe it, and I'll give you permission to write in a second if you're a note taker. I wanted it to look like a journal entry. I drew some journal paper. I wanted it to look like a journal entry, and I wrote the debit first against the margin the way I've asked you to make journal entries. I wanted it to look like a journal entry, and I wrote the credit second and I indented it like I've asked you. So here's how it reads. Debit, it doesn't say the word, does it? But it's against the left margin, it was first. Debit all nominal accounts that have credit balances with their balance. Why, that's a mouthful. And credit income summary. Now you may write, but don't tune me out. We're still going to converse here. And I need some responses from you. You can multitask or you tell me that you can. Debit all nominal accounts that have credit balances I'd like to think of individual specific acceptable account names right this minute and not categories. How many can you name for me? Name me a nominal account with a credit balance. Let's get rolling. 
And here we go, Deanna. Is a category. I'd like a specific account name. No, that's a wrong answer. <laughs> we went from a good answer to a eh, not so good answer. Is your hand up? I thought it was. Here we go. Service revenue. Service revenue is a correct answer. Name me another one. Is incorrect. Thank you very much for bringing that up so I can deal with it. Unearned service revenue is a liability. But it sure sounds like revenue, doesn't it? Unearned service revenue, we're going to talk about in chapter 4 3, the week after Labor Day. You know why you're a little dumbfounded right now and can't think of any accounts that fit this category other than service revenue? It's the book's fault. Did anybody catch a minute ago when I said, I like the way the book does this? See, you don't notice it when I say, I like the way the book does stuff. You just notice it when I criticize the book, don't you? Because here we go. I think the book has taught you to be tunnel vision and to think that service revenue is the only revenue account in the whole wide world. And to prove my point, let me tell you about an experience I had over the weekend. I was working on the computer at home, and I was editing 8th edition transparencies to use in class to 10th edition. So I've got the 8th edition on the screen, I see what it used to be in the 8th edition. I'm reading the book, I'm making the corrections, and I'm checking my work against the solutions made. And the particular exercise I was editing was about a golf course. And to play golf, for those of you that don't know, the money you pay to play golf is called a green fee. So in the exercise in the 8th edition, they called it green fee revenue, which is a really nice name for the account. Green fee revenue. And I looked in the teacher's manual. Want to guess what the book called it in the teacher's manual this time? Come on, everybody said Service revenue. Why didn't they leave it green fee revenue? Every exercise and every problem that you encounter calls it service revenue. In other books I've taught out of, we had taxi cab drivers that called it fares earned. Doctors call it professional fees. Lawyers call it professional fees. Laundromats call it laundry revenue. Movie theaters call it concessions income and admissions income. When you earn money on your savings account at the bank, you call it interest revenue. How y'all doing? Is anybody with me right this minute? Is there more, are there more revenue accounts than just service revenue in the real world? Yes. Too bad we don't know a few. I wanted to name some specific ones. I wanted to hear some wrong answers so we could get to the crux of the issue. Nominal accounts that have credit balances. Now, why, if it's revenue, why didn't I just say debit revenue and credit income summary? Because I'm trying to write this for the ages. I'm trying to get you to not have to learn this list and then learn another list in a chapter or two. In a few chapters, we're going to be closing things in the first step that are not revenue, but they are nominal accounts that have credit balances. Is anybody with me right this minute? Yes or no? Yes. I know where you're going. I'm trying to get you there. Let's talk about that, that phrase in that description that says, with their balance. Let's just practice a second. So let's say that this is service revenue. Let's say that service revenue's balance at the end of the year is $10,000. I propose that we debit this account with $9,999. Is that all right with everybody in the room? Say yes or no. That was pathetic. Come on, speak to me. I'm going to debit this for $9,999. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. What part about closing interest do y'all not understand yet? <laughs> Close means to reduce an account balance to zero. And I'm proposing to debit this account with $9,999. Is that okay with you? Yes or no? No. How about $9,999.99? No. And you call me picky. <laughs> oh, y'all are being a little picky right now, aren't you? How about $10,000 at one cent? No. No. Only one number will do. What is it? 
Uh, we're going to debit this account with, with its balance, it says, with exactly $10,000. And when we do, its balance will be zero, just where we want it. That's what close means. Debit each and every nominal account that has a credit balance. And when you do and post, their balances will be zero. And transfer the balance to the most temporary of all the accounts, one called income summary. Let's talk about income summary. It was invented in step one. We're going to eliminate it in step three. In essence, what we're doing is taking all the revenue and moving it to income summary as a credit. Income summary will be credited in the first entry with the total revenue. So let's think back at the objectives. The objectives are to reduce temporary account balances to zero. How are we doing? In step one, we're going to eliminate revenue and move revenue to income summary. If you're with me and you know it, say yes. Yes. Step two, looks like a journal entry. Would you not write just for a second? Don't write yet. Just gander at it. Debits against the margin. Credits indented. Here's how it reads. Debit income summary. And credit all nominal accounts that have debit balances with their balance. You may write. Don't tune me out. Still participate, please. Let's name some. Nominal accounts that have debit balances, we ought to be able to name five or 10. I need some fresh volunteers. Name me a nominal account with a debit balance, Justin. Rent expense, Rent expense is a correct answer. Daniel? Salaries and wages expense. Salary and wages expense, Demary Demetrius? Uh, supplies. S expense. <laughs> supplies. Which is it? Supplies, supplies. or supplies expense? Supplies. Supplies is an asset and is incorrect. You're still on the hook. Supplies expense. Supplies expense is the correct answer. It's nominal. Are you with me? Name me. Come on. Here we go. Come on. Here we go. Miscellaneous expense. Travel expense. Advertising expense. Insurance expense. I'm convinced. Good job. What do all these right answers have in common? They're all then why didn't I just say debit income summary and credit all the expenses? That'd work now, but it wouldn't work later. If you can learn it like this, we're going to make some credit entries in this entry. We're going to credit some accounts that are not expenses in just a few chapters. I know where we're going. So let's talk about what we accomplished in the second step. The purpose of closing entries is to reduce temporary account balance to zero. In the first step, we close revenue. In the second step, we close expenses, and we move expenses to the debit side of income summary. This is the sum of all the expenses. If you're with me right this minute, say yes. Yes. We've been here before today under different circumstances. We were here before on other days. You know the answers to the questions I'm about to ask. One thing is, how does an account work? Another thing is, what name should be given it? To find the balance of an account, you simply compare the two sides. The balance of the account is the larger side. If the balance of this account is credit, what caused it? Jehoshaphat, that was the right answer. Say it loud enough the class can hear you. The revenue. The revenue did. The revenue was greater than the expense, he said correctly. Are y'all with me or not? <clears throat> That's what caused its balance to be credit. Now let me reformulate the question. If the balance of this account is credit, what name shall be given it? Come on, speak up if you know. You're mumbling. <laughs> you know this too well for, you, for me to accept that answer from you. If the balance of this account is credit, what's its name? Say it. That's still mumbly. The balance of this account is net income because revenue is more than expense. The balance of the account is credit, it's net income. 
If the balance of this account is debit, what caused it? Expenses. Expenses, Expenses caused it. Expenses were greater than revenue. Yeah. If the balance of this account is debit, what's its name? Everybody said no. No. Oh, Thank you. That was much better. Nothing like a good old chewing out to get you motivated. <laughs> so here we are approaching the third step in closing entries with the potential of income summary having a debit balance or a credit balance. That's the reason I'm changing formats. I wanted this one to look like a journal entry. I wanted this one to look like a journal entry. This one, there's not just one fixed all the time journal entry you're going to make. So on the handout, I described what we're about to do, these two journal entries, and gave you a place to write them right here. I wish I didn't have to point it out to you. But when I dismiss class and these are empty and blank and you didn't follow the verbal thing that's about to happen, I'm sorry that you missed it. I would like to say this one time. I would like to challenge you to be a good listener and a good thinker and a willing volunteer to try and accomplish the situation I'm about to describe. The third entry is transfer the balance of income summary to capital. There's two possible outcomes to that. It depends on the circumstances. So here's my one-time deal. If I have to repeat it, I will, but I'd rather not. Y'all ready for this? Here we go. May I have a volunteer who would illustrate the third step in closing increase, transfer the balance of income summary to capital for a proprietorship owned by John Doe who was profitable. Say that one more time. Ah, not until I see if somebody will volunteer. <laughs> Because I set you up twice and told you I was going to try to say it once. My wife says, if you repeat the question, you teach them to be bad listeners. If they know you'll repeat the question, they don't listen well the first time. <laughs> now, did he get you off track and you don't know what the question was? I told you I'd repeat it, but I wasn't going to be happy about it. Make me an entry to illustrate the third step in closing interest. Transfer the balance of income summary to capital for a proprietorship owned by John Doe who was profitable. I need a volunteer. I need him fast. Justin? Um, you debit capital, or no, you pay debit capital and credit uh, income summary. As a merit. Did we talk one day about the 10th edition of the book and their, the liberties they took with the names capital and drawing yeah. mm -hmm. and how I wanted them a certain way. Remember that, Justin? Mm -hmm. Why do you think I threw in the owner's name into the conversation, into the expectations in my verbal description if it shouldn't come out someplace and affect the journal entry? I didn't hear it from you. John Doe, comma, capital. John Doe, comma, capital needs to be debited or credited. Is that what you said the first time? No. <laughs> I've got a tie score from you. Is it debit or credit? Credit. What makes you think it's a credit? Because to close the income summary account, you have to debit it. Right now, the balance of income summary is credit. And you said we need to close it, and you're correct. Transfer the balance of income summary to capital. What does net income do to capital? It increases or it decreases it? How do you increase capital? Debit it or credit it? So you need, in this entry, to debit it or credit it? Say that. A minute ago you said debit, then you said credit, now you said debit. Here's the score right now. You want us to wipe the slate clean and start all over? Make me an entry to transfer the balance of income summary to capital for an assumed proprietorship owned by John Doe, who was profitable. May I have a volunteer? Justin. <laughs> um, 
good debit net income into the credit capital. That's the best answer capital. you've given, okay? That's the best answer you've given. That has merit. Now let's clean it up. Meet my expectations. Is there an account name net income? That's what you meant to say. Yeah. Don't make me figure it out. Clearly communicate with me. Now you're saying debit income summary. Yes, that's correct. And credit? John Doe Economy Capital. Thank you. Well said. How much? Uh, whatever your net income is. That is correct. Woo! We're getting someplace all of a sudden. Debit income summary, credit John Doe Capital for the amount of net income. This may be the first time I've asked this question. Justin, have you posted mentally? Y'all yeah. heard that one before? Must I write everything on the board? Do I have to show you everything? Can you mature into this and understand this topic enough that you can see it in your mind? That's what I'm asking. You made a right in from way to go, Justin. Have you posted mentally? Yes. What's the balance of income summary right this minute? Zero. Whoa. <laughs> How are we doing on our objectives? To reduce temporary account balances to zero. In the first step, we eliminate revenue. In the second step, we eliminate expense. In the third step, we eliminate income summary. Are you with me right this minute? Say yes or no. Yes. Debit income summary for the amount of net income, its balance will be zero. And move that to capital, to increase capital by the amount of net income. There you go. Now, it took us three or four tries to get there, but I think we learned something. If you were paying attention, you ought to know more than you did a minute ago, so you would be prepared to volunteer to do this one. Aha, here we go again. There's two possibilities here. I didn't write them out. I gave you a place to write them out. It's been out in the air someplace. Did you grab it and put it on your paper? Here we go again. Make me the entry to illustrate the third step in closing entries for a proprietorship owned by Mary Smith, who was unprofitable. May I have a volunteer? Demetrius? Give you a try. I like try. Um, you, um, you debit, you debit Mary Smith, comma capital, and you, um, you, your credit income summary. Is correct. I thought I was in Tim Cobarton Hall. That was music to my ears. That was fabulous, Demetrius. Thank you. For how much? Whatever, whatever, she, whatever she wants. Uh, whatever the net wants. Thank you. Is the correct answer. Have you posted mentally? Absolutely. What's the balance of income summary right this minute? Uh, <laughs> the balance of income summary. After you posted. Zero. Is correct. Demetrius, did you know that before Justin and I had this conversation? Yes. You knew all that that you just said? Yes. I don't believe you. <laughs> I, hope, I hope it's true. Please, Lord, let it be true. Did you really know all that? Yeah. Then why didn't, I was listening to him. Did you know it before I oh, said Oh, no, not before. That's no. what I asked. After. After. That's After. what I asked because no. I'm trying to heap some more praise on Justin. Do you remember how painful that was? <laughs> huh? Do you remember how painful it was? Did you hear what you accomplished? You're welcome. <laughs> that was fabulous. Did the rest of you get it? Yes. There's two possibilities. One in this case of net income, it increases capital. One in the case of net loss, it decreases capital. If you need to see them written out, they're both in the book. Go find them. But I hope you've written them in your notes correctly right this minute and you can see the difference in them. And if you don't, that you'll ask me questions at an appropriate time. I'm going to press on. So, looks to me like we finished. We're ready to do, oh, wait a second. Oh, I just forgot to scratch that out in step two. It's got a debit balance, so I should have marked it out then.
recovery. I don't think it's right. Apparently, <laughs> y'all don't care what I do. <laughs> oh, I guess I should have marked this out in step two. Is drawing nominal? Did drawing get closed in the second step? Does drawing go on the income statement? No. Drawing doesn't go on the income statement. Drawing is not nominal. Drawing is contra capital. Drawing does not get closed in the second step. I was trying to trick you, and apparently I did. Thank goodness I was here to <laughs> save you, too. <laughs> No, there are four steps in closing entries. The fourth step is transfer the balance of drawing to capital. I wrote the whole thing to try to last longer than just this chapter. I even wrote this one long enough to last through corporations. There's some corporation lingo here. Dividends and retained earnings. Transfer the balance of dividends to retained earnings is the way corporations would say the same thing. Transfer the balance of drawing to capital. So here we go. Where's that good listener? That good thinker? That good volunteer that's willing to illustrate the fourth step in closing entries? Transfer the balance of drawing to capital. Make me an entry. The business is owned by James Brown. Hans, you've got that call on me look on your face. Do I? Yeah. <laughs> you volunteering or not? I'm not, but I can if you want me to. I want somebody to volunteer. Do you have more facts about John Brown? <laughs> 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 Make me an entry to illustrate the fourth step in closing entries. Transfer the balance of drawing to capital for a business owned by John Brown, Hans. Uh, wouldn't you debit drawings and credit capital? That's a question. You would debit, debit drawings and you will credit capital. That's an acceptable answer. Ray Greg, the rational being, says, way to go, Hans. Ray Greg's computer might say, doot, because the computer demands more preciseness than that. I've asked you to use a particular format for the names of capital and drawing accounts. Can you help me out on that one? Yeah, you would. Um, Debit dividends and you would credit retained. In chapter 14, when we get to corporations, that's correct. That is not what I meant here. Uh -oh. No, there's something about John Brown that you haven't taken into account yet. Debit, capital, credit, drawing, you told me. Can you improve those account titles? Hans wants you to use a lifeline. Who knows what I'm talking about? Hand up, please. Would you talk to me, Cassidy? Debit John Brown drawings, and then you're going to credit John Brown Capital. Is incorrect. It's not what Hans said. It's an improvement over what Hans said, but it's an unimprovement over what Hans said. Hans, what'd you say? Uh, I said that you would debit drawing and credit capital. I didn't think that's what you said. If that's what you said, I made a mistake. I could have sworn you said debit capital credit drawing. Yeah. And just now you said debit drawing credit capital. Sure. I'm confused. You say you're confused all the time. Now you've confused me. I think that's what I said. I wrote it down. Surely there'd be somebody in the room that could witness this. But I've got it on video. If I need to refer to the video, we'll look at it. I, I don't have to prove it, okay? It's not about proving it or finding fault. Hans, what's your final answer? Um, you're going to debit capital and you're going to credit drawing. Is correct. Would you like one more chance to improve it? Or are you going to leave that up to Cassidy? Okay, Cassidy, you're up. You're going to debit John Brown Capital and then you're going to credit John Brown Dollar. The exact name of the account I'm looking for is not the one that the book's using owners capital and owners drawing. The tradition for 500 years has been that we include the name in the account. I was looking for debit John Doe Capital and credit John Doe Drawing. I mean John Brown. James Brown. James Brown. Wasn't that it? Okay. 
Enough said about that. Hans, for how much shall we make this entry? Um, however much the difference, I guess. The like, difference. Well, the like how much capital we added compared, or how much took out from his drawings. Which is it? You named three answers just then. <laughs> from his drawings. Okay, from his drawings. Your answer is the balance of drawing. Is that your answer? Yes. It is correct. Make the fourth step for the balance of drawing. Hans, have you posted mentally? I'm getting there. How long shall I wait? I'm good. You're good. You've posted mentally. Yeah. Good. What's the balance of drawing right this minute? The, the zero. Thank you. Woo! Hey class, how are we doing on our objectives? <laughs> to reduce temporary account balances to zero. In the first step, we eliminated revenue. In the second step, we eliminated expense. In the third step, we eliminated income summary. In the fourth step, we eliminate drawing. In the third step, we increase capital by net income or decrease it by net loss. In the fourth step, we reduce capital by the amount of withdrawals for the year. Who's with me right this minute? Hands up. If you still had your homework, it'd be a good thing to look at the homework problem that you turned in for today and see the closing entries that you made. Maybe you used an example out of the book. Maybe you wrote one down just like it and didn't understand it. The question is, do you understand closing entries better now than when you walked in the room today? Yes, yes. or no? Yes. yes. Now, I'd like to have one of those scripted answers from you to show me that you understand this. I'm going to have difficulty dealing with you as the choir that I'd like to direct to get you to stay together and say all nominal accounts that have debit balances or all nominal accounts that have credit balances. We're not going to stay together very well on that. Do you agree? So when I ask you about these four steps, I'm giving you permission to say that the first step is revenue. If you will admit to me, you know this original King James Version. And that the second step is expense. If you'll admit to me that you know this original long version. Do you understand what I just said? Yes or no? Yes. You may say revenue and expense. But every time you say that, you think back to this class where we learned those long descriptions. They're still good and needed, necessary. So, I would like to ask you for big hearty group responses right this minute. Hey class, how many steps are there in closing entries? Four. Can you be big heartier than that? Hey class, how many steps are there in closing entries? Four. Four. What are you closing the first step? Revenue. Revenue. Second step? Expenses. Third step? Income. Fourth step? Drawings. Pretty good. Let's do it again. How many steps are there in closing entries? Four. Four. What are you closing the first step? Revenue. Revenue. Second step? Expenses. Third step? Income. 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 Fourth step? Drawings. Drawings. All right, this will be the last time I'll ask you today. If you do a good job at it. Hey class, how many steps are there in closing entries? Four. Four. What do you close in the third step? Income summary. summary. <laughs> Second step? Fourth step? Drawing. First step? Revenue. Who's better off because you came to class today? Have a nice day. <laughs>